Hi, and welcome back to another edition of our SQL application tutorial. In this application, we're demonstrating how to use MySQL in various different stages of app development. So we're up to part five, which is how to create searches. So if you haven't uh, caught the first four parts, how to set up an application, how to set up a database, and how to do some queries, then go back in the playlist and check those out. Right now, we're trying to create a searchable text box where we can put in a partial word and then get some search results from a list of albums. So there's a whole bunch more stuff coming up, so look at all of these subjects that will make a complete app. And then, of course, when we get to the end, I'll give you some challenges so that you can continue on with your learning. My name is Shad Sluter, and I teach software development at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. A lot of my students have become professional software developers, which uh, I assume is what you're trying to do here as well. So stick with me, and you can also look at my website at studycoding.org where you can become a software developer with C Sharp or Java, make yourself mobile applications or other things that are important to the career of a software developer. So I'm glad you're here. Let's get started now with doing searches so that our application is more powerful than it was before. So I'm bringing up on the screen here everything that we've created and also a preview of where we're going before the end of this video. So first of all, you notice we have MAMP, which is our database server. And then we have the Visual Studio application that we have in front of us. What's new in this video is this box up here that says search. So if I were to put a letter in, like the letter A, and choose search, you're going to see that only albums in my database that have the letter A are given as a result. So you can see Abbey Road, Yellow Submarine, and Hard Day's Night. Let's try something else, like uh, MY, and see if there's anything that has the word MY in it. Doesn't look like it. Let's try another one. So let's try HE. And you can probably guess that HELP is one of the songs that the Beatles wrote. If I leave the search box empty and choose search, I should get all the results. And the button here that says load albums still continues to work and shows all of the albums in my database. So that's what we're going to build right now. Okay, so we've just gone back in time for one video and I am now left with the state of the application as it was before, where we had a load albums button, but no search box. So let's start from this point and then move forward. So let's start with the user interface and then we'll do the backend programming in a minute. So the user interface changes are pretty simple. We're going to put a button on here and put the word search on it. And so that way we can at least have an event. So let's put the text of search on the top and then we'll also put a text box on the screen. So a text box is where we can enter in some values and then use the contents of that box to do the searching. All right, so that's all the interface changes we're gonna make. Now let's start programming. So I'm going to go to the search button and double click it. And we have a new button click handler, button two click. Now for the first version of this button, I'm just going to steal all of the code from button one, which was to search for everything in the database. So let's just copy and paste this here, and then we'll make some modifications so that way it will search for only specific songs. So the one important change that we're going to make here is changing the method that we're going to rely on from our data access object, our DAO. So instead of searching for everything, I'm going to rename this method and provide it one parameter. We're going to name it as search titles and then provide the contents of that text box. So the contents of the text box are textbox one dot text. So those are the only changes we need to make here in form one to make it work but we need to now add this um, event here because you can see that search titles has an underlying red on it, which means it doesn't exist yet. And we need to go fix that now. So let's go open up albums DAO and let's go check to see what we have here. So I'm going to start selecting. We've got this get all albums method. And so I'm holding the shift key and the arrow to select all the way down to the very last. So this is going to be duplicated and then modified slightly. So I'm pressing control C. All right, so now that I've got the uh, items copied, I'm going to create some space here and then control V for a paste. Uh, let's see if I got uh, one extra bracket, it looks like. So let's take out him so that little red thing goes away. Okay, so now I've got a duplicate of the method called get all albums. What I want to do is change that to search titles. Inside of the uh, method, I'm going to put a parameter called string and we'll name it search term. So we're expecting to get some information from 
the form so that way we can query the database based on a keyword search. Now let's save this and go back to form one CS and see if the error goes away. So sure enough, now search titles with a text box one text parameter is now valid. So the uh, two different uh, uh, methods, two different methods sync up well. So let's go back to uh, the DAO and continue working. What I'm going to do first seems like the logical thing to do, but we will we'll have errors. But let's type it out anyway, just see what the first intentions would be if I were programming this without some uh, documentation to look at. So what I, what I want to do then is in the SQL search string, I want to add the where statement. And I want to say, I want to search for all albums where the album title is like the search term. And so will that work? If you remember from previous videos that we're missing the uh, percent sign, which is a wildcard character. And so that's the first problem that will cause this to error out. But there's another. But anyway, I'm going to try and test it anyway. So let's put in a search term with a percent and then a percent to follow it. And let's see if that works. Um, I, I, I'm predicting it won't. So let's just test it and prove my point. So I'm searching for the letter A and then type search. And sure enough, it doesn't work. Look at the error. It says you have something wrong with your syntax right near the word search term at line one. And so now we're baffled. We tried to do this with other searches in the past, but for some reason, our application doesn't behave like it did in the uh, PHP my admin screen. So what are we going to do? The first thing I'm going to do is stitch together a couple of things into a single string. So I'm going to name my string as search wild phrase which is simply the search term with an addition of a percent sign at the beginning and another at the end. And so that's step one to make this um, whole string work a little bit better. So now in my brilliance, I think, well, I can just take that string now and attach it to the SQL statement that I had before. Will this work? Let's try it and see if it doesn't. <laughs> so I run the application and I type in a letter and choose search. And sure enough, we have the same error. So I'm not getting any closer. Well, I am, but I'm trying to show you the common errors that I went through as a first time programmer and what you're probably trying to do as well. So we're going to abandon this idea and move toward the solution. A further step toward the solution is to get rid of this trying to concatenate strings together and use a placeholder. So I'm going to put an at symbol and search to make this happen. So let's figure out where I came up with that. So actually I looked in the documentation, believe it or not, and Microsoft tells us what to do. What we're trying to prevent is called SQL injection attacks. And so this great article is very simple to understand if you can go through the examples. So let's take a look at what they had for an example code that they recommend not to do. It's exactly what I was trying to do, where you take a uh, item and you try to concatenate with plus signs. And when you're done, you have a SQL statement. So it's, it's vulnerable to hackers doing things that you can do. It's called SQL injection attacks. And I'm not going to go into that right now, but if you look in the description, I can show you a course that uh, deals exclusively with uh, SQL injection and cross-site scripting, all kinds of security issues with programming. But for right now, we're just trying to get this thing to run. Let's go down and uh, we're going to go past example two because it's doing the same thing where we're concatenating strings. And so we're trying to find a solution and sure enough, it comes up with one. So the solution is this, it's called parameter queries. And the way it looks like is that we have to come up with something that has an at symbol. And then we use, uh, let's see, where is it? We have something where we do parameters right here. So we're going to have a command that looks like that. Uh, parameters add with value. So uh, we're not going to do the exact code here, but something very close to it. So take time to read this article and you'll be a lot smarter when it comes to using a SQL app and avoiding SQL injection attacks. So to make this work, we're going to split up our command uh, item here, our command object, and uh, put some extra parameters into it. So I'm, I'm cutting out the SQL string and in the line 64 where it says, make a new command, I'm just going to leave it with no parameters, just two parentheses. Then on the following line, I'm going to say, I'm going to add a parameter text or a command text to this. And it is the SQL statement. And I'm going to make sure that I have the at search parameter in there. 
So it's a placeholder for something else. Then following that placeholder, we're going to put a new line in that says command.parameters.add with value. And then I can tell the computer that at search is really a substitution for the search wild fruit. Another line that we need to do is tell the command what connection we're using. So I'll say command.connection equals, and then we have a string up above called connection, which was defined uh, like way up at the beginning of the, uh, of, the, of the class here. So we have a connection, we have parameters, and command text. Let's see if this works. So I got the app running, and let's try a letter A and do a search. And we've got some results this time. So it looks to me like we've got exactly what we want. So let's try and search for the letter B again and see what we got. Let it be. Let's try the word uh, L-E. And do we get anything? We got one song. And if I take all of the items out and do a search, we get the whole results. So this to me looks to like a search results that is successful. Now in the next video, we're going to add a picture over here. So we're going to have the album photo on the screen which is a pretty simple case. We've already got the image URL in our database. Now can we make it show up on the form? Well, the answer is yes, and it's not very hard.